Now the radiator has been placed in its place, but there's a lot of things that have to be done before we mark it firmly in place. As you can notice, these fittings down here, they've gone from pipe fitting to water hose fitting. Now, I'm going to have to be able to cut this hose here and place it on the end here. And hopefully have enough room that I can maneuver with it. Same on the other side here. Now, I don't want the bend to be too great in the water hose. On the other hand, I have to look at the sharpness of this angle right here as it goes to the edge of the cowling to make sure that my nice little top right there or windscreen can fit on it. The next thing I have to worry about is up here due to the fact I put another gauge in right here which I hadn't thought about at the time. It's very touchy getting this uh, radiator cap on and off. So I'm going to see if I can give this some room and what I would like to do is be able to take the radiator and pull it out like this. Well, it's hard for me to get it out. Anyway, get it out and put the hose on it and put it back in place, which is not a very, it doesn't look like it's going to happen because of the, um, the angle of this windscreen front thingy deal, whatever. I don't know what the hell it's called. So after I figure a way to get this hose on here, then I will uh, tighten all my clamps. And I have to, you have to remember that even if you tighten everything tight as hell today, that 100 miles down the road or when it gets 100 degrees, which we use Fahrenheit in America, I don't know how many Celsius that is, I have no idea. Or metrics, I don't know shit about metrics either. They just never taught us that. Anyway, once I get everything on here and tight, I have to be able to have access to able to get a screwdriver down in there to retighten it or a pair of hose clamps down in here to retighten this top fitting or this lower fitting or even the brass fitting. So these are things you all you have to think about while you're deciding how to put a radiator in. It will fit underneath the stock cowling fairly easily if you do your homework before you tighten everything down and get past the point of no return. Or as we used to say in ancient history, before you cross the Rubicon, which is a river in Italy, I think. So my wiring has been all chuffed away where I, uh, it's just, I, I have extra loose wiring that I can play with and do my fine tuning on when the time comes. Then I will mount the radiator, fill it full of radiator fluid, put my battery on, and I'll leave all my other stuff off, but um, I will put my battery on and I will start running tests on all the electrics as far as do all the lights work, do all the blinkers work, does um, all the gauges work and especially the light that goes behind this uh, PG damn I'm getting old uh, PG um, shit I can't even think of the name of it anyway that thing right there then I want to make sure that uh, 
my water injection, alcohol injection, will be run off of this horn switch since I'm not using a horn. I usually don't, I don't use a horn I'm going so fast that there's no time to press on it. So what I do is when I'm going at speed, maybe 60 miles an hour or wide open, I press this button and what that does is it sends an electro, electric current which opens up this 12 volt DC switch which allows the alcohol and water to run down this line and goes down to this pump. Now this pump is also connected to this switch which are simultaneously connected to this button. Then what I do to make doubly sure is this little red dot up here or I'll have there might be a little green dot up here or no I know I use this little oil light up there I cook I hooked that red oil light since I don't use the reservoir anymore I hook the oil light up to this switch and what that tells me is that as I'm driving down the road and I push that switch I can't hear anything because I'm going so fast but if that red light goes on I know I'm getting current going through that switch and I know that I'm shooting my uh, water and alcohol mixture or ethanol or whatever crazy stuff I come up with. And you can see the... Of course this is all an experiment. Then I'm, I, what I'm planning on doing is putting a little tiny computer fan about right here and my theory is I'm going to blow the, the it isn't a spray it's a mist into the computer fan which will atomize the mist even more and will shoot a water injected mist into the back of my carburetor which will just have an air horn on the back Now, I've got it to work once before, and I don't know if it'll work. Theoretically, it can work, but the, the, the jury is still out because a lot of people tell me, yes, you can, you can run water injection if you've got two or 300 square inches, but when you have a, a 120cc motor, which is who knows how many square inches, you have to be very careful in the water because you can easily drown out the the piston. That's just a few of uh, the problems that I've have to face. I'm speaking off the top of my head. I'm kind of letting my thoughts run free here, which I probably should keep to myself. But that's where I'm at so far on this project. I think the dual water pumps are going to work great. No way to, to know. The only way I'll be able to tell is by the cylinder head temperature, which should run on this water cooled engine about 180 degrees is about is a good idle. And once you get on full throttle, full pipe, you'll get up to about 220 degrees on your cylinder head temperature. And then as you jack back off the throttle, the the temperature dro drops down again. So we'll see.